Hello, hello. So I think I'll just get started. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's my first time streaming. So I hope all of this is going to go quite well. Uh, yeah, I'm new to this. So hopefully it doesn't turn out to be that bad. Um, first, I uh, think I'll outline what the plan is for today. Um, because I mean, I titled it, what did I title it? Something Python, Rust, Polyglot, Machine Learning Project. Uh, and I think that's quite open to interpretation what that means. Um, so, uh, well, let's get rid of this. Yeah. Um, uh, the general idea is that in like a normal, uh, pipeline or like the structure for machine learning project is, I can do this. Uh, no. Yeah. We have a model here in the middle. Uh, we pipes some stuff in some input in the front uh, but actually in between we also have some transformation of the inputs I would say so that would usually be uh, you get an image or so as an input uh, can we also add some text here yeah uh, Let's just say image, which also fits the case, which we will tackle. Then uh, uh, we'll transform that to something the model can make sense of more or less, uh, which would is usually called, at least in frameworks these days, a uh, tensor, some like n-dimensional uh matrix of sorts and then you get some output or some let's call it raw output um out of the model and then we do several things with that let's see okay we display it no not like that oh well uh, that's not what I want at all um, and yeah uh, feel free I don't think there is anyone viewing right now yet but feel free to ask some questions at any time um, Uh, we'll do two things with that raw output. The general one is if we're just running inference. Um, why can't I just, ah, like this. Um, like, let's call it interpreted output. I hope, yeah, we'll zoom in not that much, but I think that might be a bit unreadable. Oh, that's also not, wow. I really haven't worked much with draw or to be honest. So, uh, yeah, let's call it this interpreted output um, yeah uh, to just to put some context to it uh, 
like some of you may know uh, the very basic data set and what like it, what we're going to do today is implement one of the simplest models there is uh, of like deep learning um, which would be as an image we take uh, an image from the MNIST data set which is very like one of the most known data sets for the kind which is like a small what is it 20 per by 20 pixels or so of gray uh, values or i think it might even just be on off like black white values like binary values uh, i don't know for certain we'll have to look that up um uh, and from that you try to detect like the, uh, those are pictures of hand-drawn digits and from those you try to detect what digit it is is it a one is it a nine like it's all the numbers from zero to nine uh, as far as i know and yeah so like the raw pixel values would be an input um like in this case we can just say maybe i know they're not stored as pngs but for um for the sake of simplicity let's just call them that here then we transform that into the matrix which basically uh puts it in a more agnostic form for example you could have a similar image stored as jpeg or like some other coding um get it into that form then you run it through uh our model in this case we today we'll look at a simple multi-layer perceptron 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 yeah um which is like the supposed i mean we, we do a one layer one which is basically what does it look like i think they're nice images probably on google yeah uh that's what it's going to look like essentially just with like a lot of those like maybe we'll do 500 or so i don't know so and a lot of interconnections and weights to learn and then the raw output you get is uh in this case would be like 10 individual notes here 10 output notes and uh do you see it somewhere like this in the output layer like have 10 of those each one one of those corresponding to one of the digits and that's why i called it uh, um like the raw output because then you still have to interpret it because usually you then do like a softmax or so uh, on it to see what has the highest value like each of those is been essentially like the of the raw output basically it corresponds to percentage values like how likely is it that those uh that this is a, is a one or so and then you want to still do some like small processing it to say hey maybe like if all of them are even maybe we don't have a like actually interpretable output at all if they are same uh, but if they're like one is 99 percent and all of the others are none then we just say okay like that's a four for example um but that all of that would be the inference step and uh, in training uh, a neural network or machine learning model it i have to stop dragging that thing um it looks a bit different because there we often have a bit of a differently structured loss. Let's do that in training. Um, how do we color that? Training loss. Uh, 
and yeah, I still want to have the text green yeah here. I hope yeah you can see that. Uh, and similarly, uh, in training, you also then have like patches of images. So in the training, it's all a bit different. And now uh, that's where the interesting the polyglot part comes in. I mean, th this is your like run of the mill, uh, multi-layer perceptron MNIST example, where for which there are like hundreds, thousands of tutorials out there. And now we want to do uh, something a bit different. Let's maybe. Somehow my trackpad is very sensitive here. Can we just draw a line, a divider between? Yeah, let's just use this as a divider. Maybe a bit of a thicker font. So um, that's your basic model text. Can we just do text? Yeah. I think that's black. Um, why? Why did that turn green? That's what we want. <coughs> and uh, what you want to do now is uh, modularize all of that stuff, more or less, to uh, um, let's say uh, we build this in PyTorch, which will what we do will do today, and then. Uh, we want like all of this, basically all of that code, that code, that code, like that code that transforms it here, like the output transformation. Maybe let's make that clear in a way. Um, Like the output transformation, Oof, that's a bit smallish. Can we take that to the front? Uh. Okay, we can move it. Yeah. Um. Oh, the text is bigger. Whatever. Uh, so all of this, like this code block, this code block, this code block, it's all Python. And maybe we can symbolize that by making it bluish. Because Python is blue always for some reason. And uh, so let's liberate all that. Uh, let's get this available in other languages. Uh, mainly, uh, my motivation for it is to have it be available just in other languages in general. Like Python is a final language for, in my opinion, I mean, it's a final language in general, uh, but fine enough for training it in, but I usually would like to deploy my model in maybe another language. Maybe if I'm feeling extreme, put it into jump JavaScript, uh, do it on a web or some web assembly on the web who knows uh or embedded embedded it in a mobile device and like i know for all of those some parts exist and like this is i f i would expect or i'd hope i mean i'm also discovering this with you i haven't built anything like that before like i've built this up here but uh the lower parts we which we'll get to i've never built uh so uh, what we're going to do is oh god 
Why does it not have keep defaults? Yeah. Um, we will export that to an the whole. I mean, I'm still very flexible on like choosing of tools. Uh, if anyone watching has input, please give me input there. If you have some, um, but let's basically what we want to get to here is like an ONNX uh, model where like uh, ONNX is like a standardized uh, execution format mostly. I mean, by now they also support training, but I think that's in one of the newer feature sets that almost none of the ONNX runtimes support, I would say, I think might also be wrong there um but yeah um we then we have a onyx model which like those that's not that new that exists but also then uh, you still usually have some transformation and i think that's where it gets tricky that's where especially if you have like a multitude of formats in uh, uh, which I've seen especially in some academic data sets where it's not just a single image but maybe like here you have like one of multiple classes one of multiple modes how the network works uh, it usually tends to be a bit more fuzzy or then like people tend to use functions from scikit or so which are not necessarily deterministic which might reorder some of the labels or the labeling. So like option one might become option three. And to make all of that, uh, like you would need to like very hard, like strictly define it for it to work well. And so there we also have, uh, yeah, uh, the goal is also to like implement it in another language like see if we can find a good way there and maybe once we have implemented it like tie that implementation in our language already into a training so the hope for me would be that we can do a lot of that in rust uh, maybe like as a bridge to python use pyo3 which is this nice project here uh, which I've also not used uh, before. I'm also excited to try it out. Uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, um, so you can do like bind, like use Rust from Python and also do the other way around using Python from Rust. Like that would also be an interesting way. Uh, even if you can't, maybe even we might even try that first. Uh, before doing the onyx terms, uh, the onyx export to just execute it in that way like but i mean i think that might have some portability issues like that model since you always need a python runtime with you which is not optimal uh, but it also with that i think if you do it the right way you can also ensure that like or run tests that the transformation you do here is the same you do in, as in your training. Uh, that might also be something interesting to explore. But here we just do a rewrite. And yeah, we're just going to rewrite it in Rust, like the meme. Uh, let's maybe. Okay. And so we have like that's mostly agnostic. Let's give it that color. And then we basically have the same. F Whoa. Yeah, that's what I want. And I mean that in the sense of tensor stays the same. Uh, 
that also stays the same essentially. Let's just draw a new one. I'm not sure why I chose draw AO. I mean, I don't do a lot of diagramming usually. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then also the output transformation we do the same thing, um, and I mean we're we going probably going to do it in steps first. Do this, run it from with with a Python transformation. Uh, do the output transformation also in Python, and uh, let's get rid of this. Can do that. Can you just unset a background color. Oh no, we can't. Yes, we can. <sighs> this thing is killing me. I oh, just ticked it. Okay, great. Put the size down again. Uh, and also this one in Python as well, as we talked about. And we also just basically want to rewrite that in Rust. And I mean, I, I'm actually like doing it for purpose and not just for shits and giggles, rewrite in Rust for the meme. Um, I mean, I have some projects upcoming where I would like to apply this. That's mostly why I want to test it out here. Uh, I feel like I understand this tool less and less. Yeah, okay, that works. And Yeah, so the goal is to get to, I mean, the goal is not you necessarily to have this in Rust, in our case, um, I'd like to. But the goal in general is to provide like a path of how you could like structure such projects and apply that to any other language. Oh no. I mean, here we also um, cut out the training part. Uh, like all of that here is then basically, that's a baked model, essentially, where you can't change much about it anymore. The weights are all set, uh, which also would hopefully allow for some optimization optimizations. Um, I haven't looked at what became available there in the recent years since I like, when I didn't do much uh, machine learning in the area, uh, but let's see. Um, so yeah, uh, the goal is necessarily to have that in Rust, but it could be any other language. Uh, what would also be nice is to get those parts potentially, uh, which might be easy in Rust, uh, to get them to become WebAssembly or so. And then as a group of those three, and if there's also like a WebAssembly Onyx runtime, I know there is an Onyx runtime in Rust. I don't know how web portable is because I think it relies in its core in on like a C, a C++ library. I'm not 100% sure, we can check that out. Um, but yeah, uh, if it would be, uh, like also be able to transfer it to WebAssembly, 
then that would mean that like that construct of those three, like the whole pipeline could be neatly uh, like packaged into like one big WebAssembly module. I mean, with the model loading, that might be a problem. Like for bigger models, you don't want to, especially in your web, you won't, won't want to load it. But also for like desktop WebAssembly use cases, you get like a nice chunk of uh, portability because then basically everything that has a WebAssembly runtime can uh, use that whole model together with the transformation steps. There you just have to define an interface of, hey, you give like a X by X pixel input PNG, and then you get as the output uh, the number uh, that you were trying to predict in our case. Yeah, so that's the plan. I'll just quickly uh, save that and put it into the show notes. Yeah, I am I'm not sure if I mentioned it. Uh, I think they're also linked on my Twitch profile. Ooh, editable. Okay. Strange way to sure remove. Okay. Uh, that's actually what I wanted. Let's just save that. And I didn't. Okay. Let's just quickly see if we can uh, just put it here first hmm hmm uh, that in here SVG let's see if like some other program like GIMP can actually open this or if it's just like a weird SVG proprietary dry O format I don't know Well, it's a GIMP Inkscape. It really doesn't take that long. Okay, we have something. Okay, there's something there. That vaguely looks like the architecture. We were going for. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll uh, also make that available in the show notes. So, like, after the stream, hopefully, all of that uh, is also, I mean, also archived for maybe the next stream. Let's see. Okay. So that's what we have in terms of architecture. Let's also pin this here. So we can look it up later. And what I first want to get started on is getting all of this done in Python, which is already quite a bit of fun. Uh, so let's set up a new project. Uh, let's do an upset right here. Oof. Do we have here? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, let's just call it polyglot. Polyglot perceptron and uh, yeah just a sec mm. 
the idea is wait test test yeah um yeah not the ideas uh we're going to use poetry for dependency management in python because i don't like most of the other options available poetry in it just fill out the questionnaire sure yeah yeah let's do it mit or apache 2.0 which i think is a valid hmm. yeah they recently added like a validity parsing but apparently it doesn't support or i guess Wait, what's the thing I have in all my other projects? I think it should be MIT or Apache 2.0, but maybe Apache is spelled different. The thing is that that is a valid license combination, but a lot of the one, the license name parsers don't actually support like those clauses. Um, hold on, leave. That has a valid name in here, Apache 2.0. Yeah, seems bad, right? Just, it looks like it doesn't support that parsing. So let's just do MIT Python this is fine. No, no, we'll add those after. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, so the reason I'm cho choosing Apache or uh, MIT or Apache, this might break some like license checkers or whatever. No, I hope not too much. Uh, the reason I'm choosing that license is just, I mean, later it should become a Rust project too. And the general norm in the Rust community, and I mean, a license I agree to generally for most of my projects is like MRT or Apache. Like it's by choice of the user, you can use either. Um, and the Rust uh, programming language in a lot of the uh, projects in the ecosystem have that combination. So I just try to stay compatible here. Uh, and I don't have, yeah two hard feelings either way between those two licenses. Uh, let's add some dependencies. Uh, so I already said I'm going to implement it in PyTorch. So let's add that. Let's ropo atri at torch. Let's see if I can just specify multiple. And um, since we already leverage PyTorch, for the data sets they have. Like they have like some auto set, automated data set downloading, at least for the MNIST and I don't know, ImageNet, a lot of those, a lot of the standard data sets. So uh, we also take Torch Vision with us, uh, which I know has the MNIST data set, or I'm pretty sure it has. Oh, I also wanted to, if anyone, and that. TC connect on fine. Hmm. I think that one is broken a bit. Hmm. 
which should connect to the Twitch chat here. So I don't always have to look down on my tablet if anyone wants to add something. Now let's see, let's wait for that. Let's just put that there. And But I mean, the main thing we're trying to do first is train this model. Um, so yeah, uh, and I mean, I'll just code it down there at first, clean up uh, one step at a time. And uh, let's see, I think at first I uh, also have this, um, yeah, I'll also put that into the show notes. Um, we're going to leverage whatever is written in that article. Not all of it. It has like a, a simple boilerplate. Instead of picking everything up, um, stream stuff. Um, instead of like picking together the documentation from all places, which might be a bit more educational for you viewers. I don't know uh, if we go into depth into all of the nitty gritty each function, um, but uh, it's not really where I do it. And I think with that, we'll get over the bootstrapping phase of the project a bit quicker. Um, so we have this year for uh, like our multi-layer perceptron. Uh, that article. Uh, so yeah, I'll just copy and paste most of the stuff together at first, then we clean it up. And uh, yeah, I don't think that does anything of what we want. So that's basically the network. That's basically the network. Oh, that does not look too nice. Copy paste it. Python won't like that indentation. Yeah, torch is missing. Import torch. Will lower errors go away? That looks better. That looks better. Um, let's just call this. Uh, Feed forward is always too a bit too generic for such models. Let's just call it multi layer because I mean it's not much more than that. It's very simple. Okay. Oh, I haven't seen that. That's interesting. Um, divide that a bit. That looks good. Yeah, um, so what the network basically does is we have two fully connected layers. That's what the FC stands for. The, like this layer has like N, like input size input nodes and hidden size output nodes. And then we go from hidden size output nodes to one output node, which is also something which we'll change because we'll have 10. Um, and I mean, this year doesn't do an MNIST thing. With those parts, we'll uh, 
to from somewhere else. We'll have this later. Um, just in the main body here. Yeah, now we know. I think it's 20 by 20 for um, for MNIST input size, hidden size, hidden size. We turn it up to 200 might be good enough. And we've renamed that. Learning lame sounds good. Learning rate. Yeah, sounds good enough. I think it's complaining with the spacing. That looks better. And uh, yeah, um, do some basic training. Let's just toss that in first. We'll clean it up later. Yeah, to the that really messes that up. Um, yeah, so here we set up the model, the loss for it, X test. Let's just put a to do in here for make input which we get from the MNIST data set uh, provided by Torch Vision. Y test is, um, I mean, that's the input. That's then Y pred before train. Test loss before training. Let's comment that out because I have no idea what that is supposed to be for. Um, blah blah, and later we'll evaluate it. Usually, you have like a I mean, most modes I've seen optimize that evaluate it after each. Oh, that's for the test data, okay. Okay. What does PyTorch model evo do? Does it print a summary? Mm, what does it do? <laughs> what does the offer do? Ah, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, usually we test the loss after training of every epoch. That's a bit strangely named with the duplicate both epoch. Let's do that with epochs, how many we want to train. Uh, 20 should be fine for that kind of thing, like that simple MNAS prediction model. X-train. Uh, it's a bit strange that it doesn't have to extrain anywhere. I think. Yeah. So we'll split it like that. X train I X train as the input. We take per we also need to get somewhere and let's do this uh let's just print the epoch here epoch Uh -huh, uh huh, uh huh. So we don't that plug down here. So like for every epoch, um, I mean, if, mm, 
maybe you know what the epoch is maybe you don't um an epoch is basically like one usually you train like the whole data set in a lot of cases depends on the size i think for image nets or so you only do a random part of a fixed size um so like every epoch it will have seen it will have trained on like seen each of the mnist images once and uh trained each of those and there we also probably need to add the stuff a little bit uh, and then so yeah uh, after we have done that i mean that does look like a full epoch here we somehow need to get the train data uh, computer loss and then like we back propagate it and then the optimizer does its thing and adjusts the loss uh, uh, like adjusts all the weights according to the loss contribution of the individual uh, weights in the network so then uh, once we uh, have trained all the like it has seen all the let's say thousand images in MNIST we uh, then evaluate it on the test data set you usually have like an 80 20 percent split between um, train and test data set so you know like did it actually learn something like did it not just learn the training data set but can it also predict samples it has never seen before so we also need to get like x train y train there and i think we'll need to have a loop around here like so it will actually feed it everything in the epoch and not just one individual thing and let's look at the torch vision let's get the data set sets from somewhere Da, da, da. That looks good. Ah, there's it's. I mean, there are also like fashion MNIST and all those, which I think are mostly called MNIST for like they want to be like a standard or so in a similar way, but fashion MNIST is like very different from MNIST. I might just be talking out of my ass here. Uh, let's see. So we have that like that. Let's just paste that in there. I'll actually put it up here so it also mimics like the architecture I drew earlier a bit more image net yeah we want that I think it works a bit different we can also it has a neat feature where it basically auto downloads it for you uh i don't think i'm not sure how we need to transform let's just put that in there oops that was too much so uh let's put it into a deck like here we specify a directory um we once Oh, yeah, let's do it twice. Let's do it first for the training data set, and then we have a different one. I think we might need a transform later on. Let's just do it another. That's the default target transform we don't need. But download we want. Uh, that basically tells it, I think, as per documentation. Uh, yeah to download the data set if we don't have it yet um, because 
getting the MNIST dataset by yourself is a bit annoying and also parsing it because it has more or less a proprietary format if I remember it correctly. I mean, uh, later in the project, we'll also have to get to that. Like if we then want to port over the initial transform part uh, of the data, I don't think we'll get around that much. Though uh, most of the length, I think there is something in Rust where we also uh, already get like them in this data set, but we'll have to see. But there are, I mean, I also don't know if like what, if what, PyTorch downloads here is already like a mangled version, like some, or if that's the actual MNIST raw data as you would get it from the MNIST website. Uh, batch size seems a bit small. Uh, let's leave it at that. I mean, this will be done automatically, and we also want to shuffle. That's a uh, can be a bit important. I don't think it matters much here for the simple example, um, but what your shuffle does on the data loader is that it will like every epoch or so shuffle the data set. Like once it ex exhausted the data set, it will shuffle the whole data set. And so with that, you guarantee that it sees the all the samples, all the data in a different order. Uh, every epoch so it doesn't it could learn a specific order and like it would learn the order but it would have some bias according to the order it is trained so if it sees like once like if all the if it's linearly ordered by the numbers uh, in the MNIST, the MNIST data set so they see say the first hundreds are zeros the second hundred are ones the uh, and so on and the last hundred are nines then uh, like all the training on the nines is the most recent stuff at the scene so it might be biased to recognize everything more as nines than and it might be biased against recognizing zeros or ones which were er early in the data set Bas because they basically because it's more trained now on the nines like recogn correctly recognizing the nines and has forgotten a bit how to correctly recognize the zeros the ones. Um, yeah. So that's also going to be data loader train. Train. Let's get it all formatted for us. Uh, it has the smaller line widths, I think. And separately, we also want the data sets for testing. Da, da, where we will set train to false, because that's uh, there we get the testing data set. So we have all the data loaders. So let's see how we, uh, yeah. So uh, it looks like we are actually doing more of documentation digging than I thought. Uh, There is like way to get the items and to do individual training items. Um, you know what? I'll just look into an older project I have, which isn't quite working <laughs> uh, after I transformed it to PyTorch from TensorFlow. But that doesn't change that that part of the code is probably correct. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, here we also have a specific data set class. That's not what we want. We want the training here. 
Yeah, uh, that's the data loader. Essentially, we have. Do we have the zero grad step? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we copy that over. To the top here, yeah. Um. So here we make sure we get all that correct. Uh, we're not going to do that because our epochs are going to be so small. But let's do training. All that training train loader. Um, we call that data loader train and da -da -da. some sample batched. Okay, that's our input. I um, mean, here we have like I have multiple inputs for the whole thing. Here it might just be sample batched. Oh, uh, did we get any info on what the form of the data is? Because that's going to be important too. Because we also need, I mean, the target for it oh i think the target also yeah that's in a different thing sample batched uh, where do you compare it sp ah damn it it doesn't say much let's look into the code so it's just called like dot target and Get item image. Oh, we get a tuple. So what is the Python dot zero? Oh well. Uh, or can we just destructure it? I can just do that to index operator. Good. Um, yeah. Let's zero was the image and that was the target. So sample. I think we can just destructure it. Let's try that. Let's do it later. Not that we introduce a bug here. Uh, that I think that comment was meant for this line, and that comment was meant for that line. Yes, so that looks okay. So we get our prediction from the image. We compute the loss, epoch train loss. That looks okay. Optimize a step. Yeah. Uh, and then basically we do how do I do it for the test torch no grad what was that torch no grad
Oh, yeah. Uh, we also want to do that um, because it turns off the gradient calculation, which speed up speeds up the inference in some cases. I think not all of them. Um, can we also say to the data loader that we want to have everything at once? So mm, let's see if we can easily get to that quote. That's a bit annoying. We can just sum the losses. I mean, here we basically do the same thing we did here, just with the test data set. And then do the same sample batched zero, sample batched one for the prediction. And then this here should be our loss. And we'll just uh, loss sum, set that for zero first, and then just sum it up. It's not the neatest way. It uh, essentially also, like loss is also like a hard to interpret value often. Like it's just a number which can be from zero to 100, can be from zero to one. Uh, very much depends on the model and the kind of loss you use. And the general thing is just the test should go down. Um, uh, let's also print that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it doesn't tell us uh, uh, accuracy or so. Like the loss could also like get smaller, but the accuracy not much better if we just like slightly light, it slightly it mix mispredicts all the numbers. Um, so it's not the best metric, uh, but it will tell us that it drains something more or less. And now, okay, we need to indentation here. Do we have any errors? Torch vision. Ah, oh, we haven't imported that yet. We did now. And I think we won't need that for now anymore. So let's see if that explodes in our heads or not. Poetry run Python. What do you call it? Train Pi, I guess. Let's see, let's see. I think we might need to transform what we get here from the data set thing first before shoving it into this. I mean here, this we could also parameterize to have the right size. Yes. Um. I think that could just be this here. Torchbon dot two tensor, which is like a transformer. If that works, we'll have to adjust it later too. Let's see, let's see. Where I did see that somewhere today. Was not here. Does this here tell us something? Did 
see the load no that's not the right one we want this here transforms is it on transforms oh, maybe it's just under it's just import transform from torch maybe yeah here we have a transform start to tender and then that should be transforms uh, that's right No, wait. And the other way around. From torch import. Cannot import name transform from torch. But uh, oh, are those from torch vision? Okay, no biggie. Size mismatch. There we have it. A hundred and twelve. Oof, I don't know. Um, chemist input size. My name's that might remedy it. Eight. Mm, that's a bit slow. Maybe because of the streaming. I don't know. I mean, it's also not the beefiest machine. It's like a twenty. What is it? What a okay, let's get that resolved. There is some PyTorch loading list. I mean, there also we could have possibly also used the full uh, um tutorial for this which could have been better, kind of boring and i did look for some and i mean there's like small things of all of them that i would change or i would have adjusted me that doesn't yeah that doesn't help at all mm, maybe that's better To tensor that doesn't look too bad, but the input size eighty five. Oh, that's BSS batch size, okay. 
Um, which we never specified in it. Say twenty. Wait. I mean, we also take this. Um, I would have thought that it is already normalized. If it's not, it's good to have. Where to be? Fifty seven. Okay, it was there. I was just worried that we might have been a bug in the that we didn't spend specify the transform here. Uh, let's give it more energy. Did we adjust the Yeah, okay. Where does it get twenty eight from? Well, five, seven, six is not like twenty four terms. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Twelve is the bad size. No. Let's look at sizes here. There is a so let's do back this PyTorch model summary. There is a way how we can print out like what it expects or what it thinks it expects. I mean, to challenge or assumption. Um, or we can just do print model, yeah, right. Uh, print model and then also we um, I think it might be print yeah I mean the size of this might be size it might be shape I forget In features five seven six. Uh, do we have to call this function? Oh, we, can, we can get rid of this as we've basically built that in later. Four. That's a batch size. One twenty-eight, twenty-eight. So it does want twenty-eight by twenty-eight. Why did the other one have twenty-four? That can't be right. But we also basically already had that and that didn't work. In features, uh, yeah. Right. Mm. 
might be weird. But maybe it can't handle batches. That's so strange. Wait, how do you input that here? Yeah, that's the CUDA stuff. Yeah, that should work. I mean, the bottle, the, the, this shouldn't need any patch size. I mean, it really shouldn't. Let's see. think do they do that here we might need to flatten last da, 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 da. I mean, they just generated the right size. And wait, we can look up the. Where do we take it? And then linear. Because I think it might have different input dimensions, and we just might uh, have to flatten the last two lay like dimensions. Do we want? Uh, and dimensions in features. Yeah, I think that might be it. How do we do that? Maybe we can use the transforms to flatten. Flatten symmetry is good. No. Um, let's not flatten. Maybe reshape. No, damn it. Hmm. Dark man, PyTorch, resize, MNIST. Hmm. 
for linear. I think there's also official PyTorch MS tutorial. Maybe let's take a look at what they did there. Yeah. No matter for that. So yeah, that looks all very similar to what we did. That looks pretty specific. Okay, weird. Um which where do they feed it into the model train they have a train function i mean that was the transformation that that that's very it's basically exactly what we have but different ranges so in the train train loader data target that's same ish it looks like that but they i mean they use a different model with which has different shape as an input mm -hmm. What did that yield? That doesn't look much better. Let's just try that with this here. Damage twenty eight times twenty eight. Let's see what that does for us. That's a bit didn't catch up the old version of the white Swiss problem. It should be PAL image. I mean, at least we got a new error. 54. I'm not sure if I like what transforms this.
let's actually resize. Damn it. Oh. Wait, let's just do what I should have done earlier. Just go there, error. Nest, linear. Yes, that's what I want. I mean, I think that's almost we can. <laughs> we can just do. This viewed a bit differently. We have that saved here. Maybe. Otherwise, we do this here. Target and input must have target element n input element forty. Um, what's I mean? Red squeeze. Maybe I just also have to squeeze this here. And we don't need that anymore. And for the structuring, I saw in, in one of the other code samples that that should work. So we might add that in a bit. Is it fifty seven? Print Y prep print size and compare that with no, that's pred, not press. Let's see, four, ten, that's our, that's this. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Of course, um, I mean, we can, to make it more obvious, we can maybe just print this here. Because then it would be pretty obvious to, you know, I'm not going to say that. Uh, 
da da da. Yeah, it's 9265, and that's like the actual values we're trying to predict. And to get from like our to that, we need like a log softmax or something. I think that might be here. Where argmax? Yeah, if we do have an output. Yeah, we also want to this for that we need to import this first to have the F available to the or the logistics of Max. Give that as an output. And criterion, if we have that. Uh, no, let's do. I think we had that from the other code sample. What do we have? N N N N N. Um. Yeah, let's also do the N N L the non-negative likelihood. N N L loss. NLL loss, yeah. That might work better. Wait, did we to softmax? Do we actually change that? Let's see. Maybe it explodes, maybe it doesn't. Oh yeah, it's training finally, or it's doing something. Uh, let's do the way with the print. Epoch zero, all of that. Tremendous. I mean, that's individual items. We don't really want this. Uh, Let's do here, just say what we just said, like trained batch da -da -da of epoch. Da -da -da. Epoch is good as the letter item, but here we can use the batch index. Um, because I mean, this uh, individual item losses on the training don't tell us much. Um, yeah. Okay. I think our batch size might still be pretty small. Let's just make that a bit more dynamic. Size. Because I mean, MNES is small and our model is tiny right now. Um, and like the back and forth, I think might slow it down even. How big is MNES? Let's also just reduce that to a hundred. 
much. Uh, yep. I mean, I'm not sure if that's e enough anymore to accurate, like to get any prediction. I mean, gen traditionally, mm, I mean, it takes a bit longer per training step, but that's to be expected. What's the... I think there is a way we can let the data loader print its total size. Well, let's just get rid of everything here. Like so, I mean, then we could print like a progress. No, damn it. I mean, that's something I also had in the other project. I'm pretty sure. No. I mean, we have 20. Thousand six hundred. Twelve thousand. That's bigger for MNIST than I expected. Sixty K. So it should go into three thousand. Oh, wow. My computer is slower than I expected. Damn it. I'm just thinking if there's an easy way to get cut it down. So that's now at 20k, yeah, 3000. We need to get to 3000. Can we do data loader size? Batch size. Hmm. I mean, you could probably m might be able to do it for sampler, but I think that's just for reordering. No, no, no. Damn, damn it. Isn't there like a wrapper for a data loader which just gives it a... What 
I think we could do this here. Get just a subset. Let's see if it, yeah, let's let it train once until uh, it has a full epoch and then see. Ah, but then we also don't see. Yeah, then we also don't see any training progress really. But if the loss is also like. Pretty small. No, I already prepared the other one. Torch utils data dot random split split this thing and to is it actually sizes mm. since it's 60k let's cut it down to 10 percent let's do six thousand Uh, the rest 45,000 and then take the first from that should work Fill it might work and it's so if this doesn't explode on a train that would also be bad of course it does Oh, because we did sample batched one. Let's see, I'm not sure we need that anymore. I think that was just a bad attempt to fix a bug earlier. this I mean that's how long it trained for right it's three thousand times twenty six can I not math Is that the right thing? I'm very curious here. Sixty K. Yeah. Some of input length is an equal length put data set. Do we have to no. That's so
we do that, that should work, right? Because I mean, then we're inputting exactly what's in there. Am I blind? I don't know. Let's go over here. Okay. Some further input. input. Data sets. Maybe I just need to do it on this here. Um. Yeah. This here. Same thing, six thousand fifty four K. Drop that comma. We don't need to print anymore. Uh, let's see. Annoying. Yeah, that should pretty. Uh, I hope this works. Okay, now instead of the three thousand, should need to train only three hundred, and let's hope we don't run into the. Error of testing again. Mm, so now it's doing the testing. How big is the um, list test data set size? Because we might just as well reduce that. Oh, it's, oh, it's fine. Let's see, that is our error after the first epoch. So, I mean, as I said, the size of the tensor, I mean, the value can be very different. Maybe that's a good value, we don't know. But let's just see if it reduces after one more epoch. But I mean, we do have very little like very few hidden units right now. Um, let's see, so it was eleven thirty-three. What do we get? What do we get? Eleven eight. Oh, I'm a bit better. I might easily take quite a few epochs. Let's see if, in the meantime. We can get some accuracy score in place. Let's see. I mean, let's. I mean, with the small batch size, it looks much better. Speed-wise, might have to set up my old tower PC, which should be beefier than this here. If it's under 1100, it should be good. Yeah, so we have some continuous improvement. But as I said, uh, accuracy is much more important than loss. Just straight up loss. Okay. Um. So 
so we can there is a way in how we can see if they match and then do a sum for it which i also did in the older project um Ah, uh, yeah, I can do equal and then the sum. That's it. Uh, where did we have loss sum? Let's do num correct for the amount of correct ones. And then here. Add that, and here we have a print squeeze dot equal this here, the output, and then a sum. So that basically um, creates a tensor of zeros and ones, like for like a one for every value that's equal and then we can just sum up all the ones so if we have like 20 equal values we get a nice 20 undefined name correct that's an correct of course and then let's just do like correct out of da -da -da. Uh, dot format num correct is correct and then we did I think it was len data loader test we can should be able to do well, let's just wait out the last value if that's still improving i mean it also might also be nice to see i mean with that we're almost finished with the initial mnist data set uh, like the thing we want to transform we didn't get to the fun rust part yet oh it's still proving yeah nice So let's see if that works. Training, training, training. At non singleton dimension. I always hide those at fiddling around with the dimensions. Maybe we got it right this time. Otherwise, I'll even further change the split until we've got that thingy right. Let's just temporarily change that to 10 and 
that split so we can run into the problem really quickly Oh yeah, the view as is a nice, uh, I think maybe that might just work. That just brings it into the same dimensions as the other tensor. I think that, I mean, it might not be always what we want, but we have some, some very simple values here. It should work. Does that change the size, the squeeze? What are our sizes? Sounds fetched. I mean, we changed that earlier, right? Didn't we essentially? Is the output size different? Ten, ten. Oh, it works for the non. Oh uh, yeah, damn it. Oh, annoying. Um. Oh man, how do we do that? No, I don't. Yeah, okay. Let's bring in. I think there might be a torch shooter torch. Hmm. What is it like? One D array to labels. One day tensors to labels. Maybe. One hot, one hot is the thing, one dear it. I think I called it something else the whole time. Sk 
scatter. Torch scatter. Is that what we want? And it's scatter underscore. Okay. Mask source elements of source into where the mask is to. No, that's mask header. That does sound okay. Okay, so we have target. Load tensor of yeah, batch size. Ten. Target it's zero it. And then do this scatter one one. Target scatter one y. Mm. It's not Y for us. I mean the one that has the wrong shape is this year. So we have that reshape that should be equal to target. Optimally it should that it should just work like that. Optimally. Let's see, I mean I want to get that done. I've been streaming for two hours now. Should be enough. But uh, first I want to get this done here. Uh, no. Ah, but now we have the same size, I think. Uh, we can do the few as Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh no, it's now I have to print that again. Print wiper point size. Print. Target dot size. See if those match. Let's hope so. I mean, it, I mean, they obviously don't. What well, I'm saying. <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, we have, but we just did the thing. Batch size ten. Batch size is not one. So this seems to be doing 
wait, maybe let's observe it before that happens. The first print should maybe the scatter does something else than I was thinking it does. Does this have one one? None of that looks like it helps. Wait, all of it source into self that is specified in the index tensor. From the tensor source. Yeah, okay. I mean, the values are one at the indices, the one we have. The output. Hmm. Yeah, might work. I mean, in theory, it doesn't sound too bad. Wait. Oh, those were the other ones. Oh, I ignore that this here does not look correct. Sample searched. Uh. Wait, let's remove this because that was confusing. Damn it. So what size is sample batched one here? Because that should just be twenty if I'm not mistaken. And index same as the self thing. Oh no, that's I mean those are twenty numbers, yeah. <laughs> Not what I wanted to print, but so that's twenty, twenty ten, twenty ten. Um how does it make sense? Wait, there's an example one, two, five. No, no. Zero gather and Zero at the positions. Yeah, okay. Zero and two. No, that's weird. Uh, I mean, it should work in case the value isn't specified. It doesn't look too bad. What do we have here? Just. Let's reread what they set up here. Because okay, it has to be you you can have use view minus one one if needed. Um <laughs> Minus one one. That might just work. Uh, 
or not or it does yeah we get a lot of stuff printing more than we want let's get rid of it i mean we don't even see the output i mean now the only f yeah i mean the test is still pretty big we can go back to a somewhat normal size training set let's see if that <laughs> with the one digit i mean it should learn one correct image maybe i don't know i mean the train testing data set is very different i guess or like in some regards different Uh, still takes quite some time to evaluate. I mean, it's always over zero out of five hundred. Correct? Why out of five hundred does not submit length? Wait, 500 times 20, that's 10k. Uh, if the testing data set is 10k pick, maybe that's what that is. So, okay, it didn't get one, a single one, right? Yeah, wait, let's not do that length, but that length. That should at least be correct. Um, we fixed uh, here, we got back to the training size. I mean, not getting a single one right does sound wrong because out of luck, it should at least get 10% or so right of out of all of them let's see how well it does once we have one epoch with a decent sized training set there almost has to be a bug in uh, that here i mean next we would look into the values we actually see in here because I almost think that it puts something wrong in here, like when we do this. Like puts it somewhere that they never can match with what's in Ypred. That would be annoying, but not impossible. Shout out who to whoever is viewing right now. <laughs> You're probably the stickiest viewer that's been around on the whole stream so far. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Zero is not okay. Um Okay, let's print what's in here. Just do that and also print Y print for good measure. Maybe Y print is also. Sp uh, we might not need to target few as anymore. we can reduce that again to debug size
I mean, usually I would have, like, maybe we'll get to the point soonish. I don't know. I think, uh, I mean, I'm more interested in getting the other thing running first, but writing, like, a small CLI around it to, yeah, wait, which are which. Hmm, yeah, those are the sigmoid values. We also want the argmax. Yeah, that's right. want to do it over there by prat point arc max I mean, that's also a bit annoying because I think that's the... Where do we have the softmax here? So that's a prediction, so and so and one. Oh, so we wouldn't have need, we would not have needed all that if I'm reading that correctly. Just for you, it would have just an argmax. Yeah. Of course. And then that's sample patched one again. Yeah, we got some, right? Uh, I mean, it's 683 out of 10,000, which isn't great. I mean, if it's, I mean, it's, uh, that's also, ah, we still have the small size in there. Of course, it only learns some stupid stuff. Let's see how it does. With the 10% set again. So 
so if that trains, we can soon export it. I hope. Then training, testing. Yeah, that's nice. Almost 4,000 of this 10,000 correct. I mean, it would have been random, would have been a thousand. So it did learn a little bit, finally. Um, yeah. Let's see. I mean, last, I mean, it's almost exactly the same values uh, as the other time we let it train with the same size. So it should run land somewhere around 1100 again. Like, let's see what that difference in loss does to the accuracy. Maybe like 200 more. Eight. Nine eight four. Oh wow, big improvement! Yeah, so with that, like after 10 epochs or so, if we didn't choose it to be too small, it might learn something, and yeah, so. Let's clean all that up a bit. Let it train in the background. And with that, we have to. Oh, we did not. Yeah. Let's see what's in data. Okay. Um, yeah, just get e ignore that. That looks grand. And it's a bit finer. Product of stream one. Put it on GitHub. To build uh, and finally, okay, push it. Let's see. Let's 
so maybe but so how good are we training right now yeah it's 74 percent it's okay let's put it in here Let's also get the number of epochs that was very good. That should just be finished. We start so that's five epochs. Okay, let's do after five epochs. Uh multi layer pesotron. So basis for multi So what do we get? Seventy seven percent accuracy, that's great. I mean it's not I mean it's really not that good. And with MNIST you should get to like ninety percent plus or so. But like for that small number of epochs, that's fine. Um, yeah. Let's also put the link in there. Okay. No, that's not it. Okay, push. So we've come so far. Thanks for everyone who's tuned in. I was sending it for one hundred percent. Uh thanks for everyone who's tuned in. Uh now we finally have like the basis for during the architecture I lined out and yeah let's hopefully see you in the next stream like in a week or so hopefully I don't know let's see see you then bye